everybody who's got to work dropping in on you. It's uh, late afternoon, early evening here on Monday in uh, Houston. Uh, before I get started, I want to remind you that we are uh, raising funds to provide the services that we provide. And let me start here. Because, really, that's what we need to start. Look, this isn't one of them friendly things. It's probably one of them things that's going to piss a lot of people off. But if you have followed me over the years, you know I'm not here to make friends. I'm here about truth, and I'm here to challenge people. Uh, we're in last place. And we're in last place, and we've got so many people suffering. And... We are acting like we're winning. We carry ourselves in this individualized idea or ideology and we're getting our ass kicked. Over the last, what? I can honestly say over the last six months, I can literally name the people who have given to this organization. And one person in particular, and, and God bless, we have a couple of people there are people, and, and to me it's not about the money, but I want to acknowledge somebody when they make a sacrifice like that. There's one person over two different um, two different um, contributions has given $500. And with that, that, ha that has probably happened in a 45 day span. And with that, over the last six months, we haven't hit $1,000. The reason I'm upset right now and the reason that I'm coming at you, because normally I'm going to say, hey, look, if you, you know, uh, if you, you believe in what, you know, the root, you know, you know, the thing, if you believe in what we're doing here, support. And I go on about my business and I do what I do and I consistently do it. But a young lady reached out to me today. Matter of fact, just a few minutes ago via email. I get stuff all the time and a lot of stuff I'm really I'm, I'm able to handle through me just by picking up a phone call, doing some things, but this person is actually in my city. And I'm gonna figure it out, but I shouldn't have to. I should have resources on deck to be able to say to her, I got you, not give me a minute, let me make a phone call. Let me do this, let me do that, let me. And I'm sitting here and this person, and the thing is, I've gotta ask questions like, how okay are you with exposure? Meaning that people might need to see you in order to feel sorry for you, in order to believe something's going on. Then there's still people gonna be doubting whether you're really going through anything while they dance to every freaking sensationalized piece of crap that's designed to get them distracted from the mission at hand, jump on bandwagons, spend money on mad, crazy, frivolous stuff, while the race is going to hell and everybody suffers for it. I don't care how financially affluent you are, the further and more irrelevant your people become, the more vulnerable you become. You are safe because we have numbers and we still have the potential to unite. Once they completely destroy that, you're gonna find out just how safe you are in this system. I've come to the point, and I'll be honest with you, I've come to the point where I'm starting to realize that Dr. Anderson, me, back in 2014, I created the uh, Blueprint uh, for Black Empowerment 1.0. At the time, I held, and I still hold in the highest regard, Dr. Anderson and the work he had did in the area of black group economics through uh, his book, Powernomics and Black Labor, White Wealth. Um, and his years and years and years of traveling and lecturing in churches and schools and in all different types of areas. So I decided to reach out to him and I was intercepted by his wife, Joanne, because he was aging and she knows his passion. And she told me, look, uh, I really need to find out what you're really trying to do, what's going on. So get me whatever it is you want him to look at. And I'll look it over. If I think it's worthy of his time and energy, I'll pass it on and we'll get back to you. 
She says, because if I give it to him, no matter what's going on, he's just going to automatically say yes. And I've got to look out for him. I said, I have no problem with that. I pass it on. She looked it over. She liked it. She gave it to him. He liked it. They endorsed it. Um, and they, she was really excited because everything that was in there, I contributed to the people where I got the idea. I may have grown it, I may have expanded it, I may have evolved it, but I made sure to give praises where praises were due, especially to him, and she acknowledged that, and she was very appreciative of that, but I look at that now, and I see the frustrations of a Dr. Claude Anderson, the frustrations of a Amos Wilson, the frustrations of a Khaled Muhammad, the frustrations of a Naeem Akbar. And what I find is we are so caught up. What Dr. Anderson say, majoring in the minor, we are all in things that bring, have no intrinsic value, bring no power, no force, no growth, no progress. And we're suffering and we don't even care. As long as I'm okay, it's good. And I'm telling you, I have no problem going hard in the paint. I'm going to go until I drop. But what I did, what I am about to do, is I'm starting to really believe what Dr. Anderson, because this is the way happened with me and Dr. Anderson uh, and Joanne. They both believe that if we didn't make a major economic move, in shifting in how we behave and how we spend by 2013, that we were going to become a permanent underclass in the US. My argument was, I don't believe in Kent, I don't believe in how bad it gets that we're ever permanently out of the game. And he held firm to it, and I'm really starting to believe that maybe uh, my mentor was right. Maybe, Maybe we might not get it. Maybe we are just so lost in our dysfunction, so lost in our trauma that we don't get it. You know, and my thing is with the number, and no, I don't have the following of some of these guys because I'm not going to sensation. I'm not going to run a bunch of sensational bull crap. I'm not going to jump on every viral uh, topic just to get likes. I'm not going to start beef with somebody just to get likes, even though I know a bunch of stuff because I've dealt with these dudes. That's not what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to build what I'm building and I'm going to trust it leaves a legacy. I am so sorry, but what I'm starting to believe is that, and I've already started making plans to move probably most likely to Costa Rica, maybe Ghana, uh, but definitely to get the hell out of this country because once we become irrelevant and we're talking maybe 10 13 years from now where we become completely irrelevant where literally we have been completely replaced in prevalence and in political importance by latinos it's going to become real hard for us and it's going to reflect heavily on our children and their children and their children and you know I'm going to do what I can. And I'm going to try to keep creating space. Any of my kids want to come, they can come. But this is absolutely ridiculous. This young lady, I told her to let me know more specifically what she needs. Um, and I know it's in the area of housing and some other things. Um, and she's struggling. She just moved to Houston from what she shared with me. And it's difficult. And, and here's the thing. She's not the only one. I literally got... St I got parents I'm helping with mental health uh, for their children. I got parents I'm helping with marital issues, trying to keep families together because it's so important for the children and it contributes to adverse childhood experiences and on and on and on. And I, I do these things and, 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 and the thing is I support my business. Uh, well, I support my organization. It's not a business because it doesn't have a, a, a earning mechanism. So it's a, it's a not-for-profit, but it's not a 5013C, and I have a reason I don't fuck with the government like that. 
Uh, they're not gonna control and dictate anything. But since I'm the only one really truly putting money into it, I really don't even have to worry about that right now. I don't receive enough to be worried about what somebody thinks about me because nobody's given enough to be worried about what somebody thinks about me. I do what I do. I funded my freaking research. I funded the darn gone uh, think tank. I funded, and, and, and after a while you start looking up and realize how much of you you're eating up, not just in money, in my emotional stability, in my mental intellect, and I'm fighting and I'm going, and I've got the strength and the energy to go, so I am, but I'm not gonna bury myself financially. I'm not gonna do it, I'm, I'm tired of doing it. So what I'm gonna do is help as much as I can and that's a shame. That's a shame because I watch how we spend. And everybody's going to sit up and say, I got a right to do it. I heard you do. But you can't say you're pro-black. You can't say you're about black empowerment. You can't say that you, you know, you're about the elevation of the black race and you're only thinking about what you want. You only think you can't do that because let me tell you something. My family could be set right now. If that's how I thought. If I said fuck black people, even right now today, within a year, my family would never have to worry again. But something about me thinks about that great, great grandfather who was a sharecropper, the great grandfather who was a son of a sharecropper born in 1909 who decided to raise his great grandson and adopt him. I think about that and I think about everything that means and I think about all the things that I've been through and all the things that my sons and daughters have gone through and I'm like, there are families out there that need somebody to be to be true to the game, to stand up and, 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 and behave in a manner. It's a shame that in a time like this in the country that lauds itself as being the wealthiest country in the world. Um, depends on how you want to define that and get past all the fiat currency and see what's really going on. Uh, but anyway, that we have as many homeless people as we have, as we have as many people suffering from mental uh, illness uh, and uh, mental psychosis as we do with no uh, resources. That's another thing I work on, literally no resources. You got to freaking kill somebody before you can get help or try to kill yourself before you can get absolutely ridiculous. It's constant. I'm literally, this is the shit that I'm pushing through every freaking day. This is, well, we can't do anything to him. He hasn't heard, heard of it. I'm telling he doing. he's doing this, this, and this, and this. I can sit up and write uh, an, an, uh, an assessment saying all these things that are absolutely off the damn charts. Well, I hadn't heard anybody. So, in other words, until somebody dies, it's not an issue. And now, he's not going to get treatment. He's going to get incarcerated. And this is shit that I'm fighting every day. Every day. And then I got to run a business. I got to find time to run a business so that I can keep doing this because nobody else is helping. To the young lady, if you happen to be watching this, as I said in the email... We'll figure it out. I really don't want to parade this late young lady. Even if she says she's with it, that's not how I get out. I don't want to parade this young lady out there. I don't want to use her name. I don't want her on there. It shouldn't have to be that way. Now, if that's what it takes to get her help and she's willing, I'm going to do what it takes. But that's, that's how you break people's spirit. That's how you make them feel less than. That's how you make them feel low. And it's almost like we get a kick out of sin that we need to see how low you are before we get our money so we can feel good about ourselves. It shouldn't be about feeling good. It shouldn't be about a damn feeling at all. It should be about a responsibility, about a collective coming together and unification of our mindsets to grow something and build something so we can do something. It's a damn shame. And, 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 and then I'm making calls and I'm not the only one. So my whole thing is, who are we helping? Because I can tell you, I work with the grassroots people, the people that are actually doing this shit. You're not helping them. We helping each other, but y'all ain't helping us. 
Now they do have the, the people out there that's working the nonprofit industrial complex game. They getting they writing they writing uh, uh, grants like crazy. Kids ain't getting shit. No program. Let me tell you something. The optics look great, but you gotta ask yourself: with all the millions of dollars that's coming out in grants, supposedly going into inner cities, why is it getting worse? Because here's the thing, just like I've done decades of research and understanding what works, they've done decades of research to know what works and what doesn't work. They know linchpins. You put a linchpin on something, everything else can be there. It looks all great, but it will not work. It's like you take that ACL out, you got a problem in your knee. Take the MCL, and you got a problem. In other words, the structure has to be put together and held together. You can remove parts that the average person wouldn't know needs to be there, and it looks like you're doing that. And then what else happens? Not only do the people do not do not only do the people not get help and not get what they need to make it. On top of that, they get to sit up and say, "We're pouring millions of dollars into this, and it's not helping." This is just who they are, and we're letting we're letting it happen. We're letting it happen. I'll be honest with you. Look, I love my people. If you can't tell by the thousands of freaking videos, the damn 26 books, the darn thousands of people I've literally helped through my organization, the uh, 80,000 80, hours of research and everything else that's done, I love my people. But come on. You know, we are going to have to do better. Look, I'm about to get off here because guess where I'm going? I'm actually going in to meet a colleague of mine who's also a psychologist to sit down and find a young black man some help. Because the system has said, fuck it, until he hurts somebody or himself. And guess who's going to have to figure it out? Me and him. Because unless you're doing some kind of dog and pony show, unless you're starting some beef, unless you're loud and making a whole bunch of crap, you can have powerful, sustained stuff that's proven over and over again. And I can't tell you how many times I heard people use my stuff, and I really don't care. Because, hey, if people are getting better, I'm good with it. But, I mean... It's so much negativity out there that we gravitate to that we ought to understand why we are where we're at. It's time to get behind the stuff that matters. Stop buying into all the shiny stuff. Ask yourself, if they're pumping that damn much money into it, why does it look like that? And if you want to know, ask me. Send me an email and say, hey, look, this organization has done this. And, and I'll tell you why. It's not. I'll tell you what part of their program needs what. And maybe you can go take over and start one just like it and ask to put it. What I'm going to tell you is going to happen. When you actually have all the mechanisms in, they won't fund you. Ask me how I know. And it's not just me. It's anybody that's actually got something. You got to understand, why the fuck they fund something when they benefit from the dysfunction of what's going on? But they got to give the impression that they care. They've got to give the impression that the, both sides of the political party has been running a hell of a game on us. Big business, big corpor corporation, and then all the shit that's going on with our children in school even big farmers got in and now five and six year olds are being diagnosed with ADHD, oppositional defiant disorder, and then uh, prescribed psychotropic drugs like Ritalin, Vyvanse, Concerta, uh, Adderall, and on and on. And then what? These drugs are scheduled two freaking drugs. They're addictive. And they're psychotropic. They're altering the state of these kids' minds. And big farmers, that's big business because it's universal in public school. Guess who the predominance of the kids disproportionately are? Black males. Look, I'm finna get off here. I gotta go in a meet. We gotta do better. And again, to the young lady, I don't know if you watch this. I don't know if you can watch this. Uh, but you reached out and I gave you a promise. I'm gonna in in whatever way I have to, I'm gonna stick to it. 
I'm, and I'm hoping that we don't, I'm hoping, I'm hoping she says she don't want to be exposed, but when you're desperate, you do desperate things, and unfortunately, we push people who are desperate into dark places behind this bull crap, but that's it, I'm out of here, you guys take care.